What was your recruiting process like coming out of high school? Um, we started to get on the map, so I really could have chose anywhere I wanted to go. Um, I chose UConn my junior year, so I didn't even wait. I was like, what y'all want me? I want right. you to. Like, right. let's, let's do this. <laughs> right. um, but it actually wasn't even in the beginning. I was more so leaning towards Maryland because that's where my sister lives. So I'm like, all right, I can go to UMD. Um, they got a good program there. And then I just went to I went to my visit to UConn. This is kind of crazy. I had all the other visits lined up. I even put Hawaii on there because I just wanted, you know, I'm saying, I wanted to <laughs> free trip. We I know. wanted to see, all right, so you already know. I went to UConn and it signed was over. with them it was right over. after Kiss. Yep. So all the other trips, those were terrible calls to make. Mm. Um, just letting everybody know West Virginia threw a fit because I didn't take my trip to WVU. Um, I knew. Like when I went there. They didn't roll out the red carpet for me. You know, everybody mm. else was like, yeah, you're going to come here. You're going to start for years. I'm like, how many people are they telling this to, though? You know, like, I just, I like transparency. So Coach Ariema was like, look, we already got a point guard. We know you're good. I don't know if you're going to start. You know, like, he's, if y'all know Coach Ariema, he's the same way for recruiting. So I think the players that go there, I think it says a lot about the players because you got people. Got to earn it. Yeah, you got, got people it. promising you the world. So people that go to UConn. Coach Ryan, which just doesn't move like that. So that that says something about the players, I think. Yep. What was your college experience like? I mean, going to a legendary program, having a legendary coach, able to capture one title uh, your senior year, but I'm sure the experience is something you'll never forget. Something you'll never forget. I mean, well, I already went there knowing the point guards that were before me. So it's like, I think that's, that, that's so what who, pushed not me. Not to cut you off, who was there when you came in? So when I came in, it was Keisha Swanye. So she was um, she was one year ahead of me. So we didn't. It was it was almost wide open in a sense of that's kind of how I was making my yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, when I say before me, I meant like a Suber, right. Jennifer Rosati, just that group of caliber of point guards. So for me, for me, like I said, I welcome that type of challenge. Right. I'm like, dang, it's lit here. So you have to you have to do something big to make an impact at a school like that and. UConn, while everyone knows that we are good at partying, we play good. We play good basketball you guys too. Like but I think, that, but it, it's like no, and I say that because a lot of times it's like stores, Connecticut. People are like, "What do you do up there other than party?" But I mean, I think that the players we have a sisterhood. You see us now, like we're all still close. Like it's not, it's not like we're all still cool. Like we're all still close. Um, we got a group chat. And I think that's just the ties that we built. Like, we built a real sisterhood there. And I think that's the culture that they make you have because practices is so hard. Everything is so hard that you got to band together. Like, we all got to be mad at Coach it's together amazing, because right? we're not going to be him <laughs> otherwise. Like, they make you figure it out together. So that's the thing I think I learned best at UConn, just that he – Coach would do so many different things. We have practice guys – there would be like eight practice guys against us, or five, and we'd have to figure out a way to beat the trap, and we'd have to do different things. So he would always say, like, I don't really care what the circumstance is. Give me a solution. So I think that's kind of my mentality now moving forward on everything. Like, all right, whatever the circumstance is, there is a solution. Like, got to find it. Yeah, got to find Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, what was it like playing for him in particular and maybe some advice that stuck with you? early on that, that they got you through it? There's so much. Um, but I would say playing for him early on, People, you know, they always say coach has favorites and I people like to label me as one of those, but <laughs> I was <laughs> I was I still think I got yelled at some. Um playing for him is is like no other because everyone else on the other side hates him and then you see like he's so down for you and he makes people mad. Like he'll say whatever you probably is think you're thinking as a player. He he's gonna say back. it. Oh yeah, he yeah. He's gonna say it and he's gonna look at you in the face and be like, and like, you know, he's gonna he's about that life and so Playing for him, it makes you like proud. Like you want to prove. Like if he says something to the media, I'd be, like, yeah, be in the huddle like, yeah, I'd be in the huddle like, listen, y'all, y'all already know Coach said that, you so like, let's it. do our thing. Like just the advice that he always just gave us was that no one cares. Like I, like people think that people care about your situation. No one cares. Like they don't care if we're battling injuries. They don't care if we have no seniors. People never care. And so once you realize that in all aspects of life, like. Your boss don't care what's going on at home. You know, like, no one cares. And so that's, I've always kept that mentality. Like, people don't care why you're late. You late. Like, people don't, you know what I mean? Like, you just, if you keep that mentality that no one cares, figure it out and do it right, um, that that's kind of what's up with you. That's stress you have on yourself, too. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first impression of Mighty Moore? I remember she, I remember playing pickup with her, and I'm like, yo, she different. Like, you know, you can just, <laughs> when you different. just see people do stuff, just like, 
She like, did. what was that? Like, you know what I mean? When, and then she do something else and you're like, oh, she's like, she's legit. Um, and you just knew, I mean, and she's, and there's a lot of players that come out and just real talk. There's a lot of players that get all kinds of hype. And then when you see them, you'd be like, they're okay. Yeah, you know, like right. they might be the best in that class, but that might be a weak class. So, you know, they're all right. She had all the hype, so you come in looking at her in that lens and... She had all the game. Yeah. I mean, exactly. as good as advertised, just some of the stuff she would do, like, I would really just be like, Mama, I know you lying. And I got to I got to play with her in college and in the pros. And so to see her in college, she already had that just raw, natural ability. She can do everything. But then to see her in the pros and, like, she had honed it on, like... She knew she was a killer and she was killing every night. Um, not that she wasn't in college, but you could just tell, uh, you know, she's like one of those generational players that you talk about. You're not going to see many more like her. Did you play with Simone too? Oh, you know I did. Simone <laughs> Augustus, yeah. Our Minnesota team. Y'all had a mob, bro. I met Sylvia Fowles was on that yeah, team as well. Um, yeah, we were... We were, that's why people thought I was crazy. Was deep. Not. In 2017. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all was deep. Um, your senior year, 39 and 0. Yeah. National champions. Yeah. Uh, anything that stand, any doubt ever creep in? Anyone ever come close to knocking yeah. that crown off during that run? I mean, think about this going to UConn and not winning a championship. Period. I mean, every time I tell somebody I go to UConn, they're like, how many you want? Like, that's the it's first question everybody asks. My junior year, I was sitting in the goose egg, so my senior year, I was, I would say, scared. <laughs> I was terrified to go down as the worst in history. They let us know we would be the worst, too. Damn. Like, the coaching staff would let us know, like, we always win here. You know, like, you guys got to do it. And so I remember the preseason. It started in preseason, like, where I was turned up. Like, I was, I was crazy. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was on one because I just didn't want to be that one that, that left without it. And then you get halfway through the season. We haven't lost a game, and I'm like, all right, that's dope. But once you get towards the end of the season, you haven't won. You don't want to be that first loss in the tournament. You get bounced out. So I would say the whole season, I was we were tight. And what I mean by tight is like, you know, like we got to do everything right because we don't have any more chance. I didn't have any more chances. And so my teammates treated it like they didn't have any more. And that was the, the, the dopest thing to me. We had a Tina Charles on that team, Maya Moore. And I think they wanted it more than me sometimes in the way that they would be offended if people weren't doing things right. Because they would be like, this is her last year. You know, like they would get on to people using that as um, the incentive. And so that was probably the coolest part about that year is how much everyone wanted it for me. You still were able to have fun, though, even though you uh, were. OK. You know, it was my second, come, on. come on, then. It was my senior year, so <laughs> let's be clear. <laughs> Question the trophy up. Yeah, which one? Ooh, she flexed on you, you even know it. See, you see that? You see that? The light flex. Uh, just, it's I would different. say the last one and yeah. being the first to be a Husky of Honor. Yeah. Um, you know, the UConn trophy, I'm, that was special for all the reasons that I just said. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, we did it. And we weren't even in the game at the end of the game because we was able to get up by enough. And I still was nervous. Like, I wanted the buzzer to go off. I wanted it to be done. Like, I don't want no problems. We know March Madness can get crazy. That one, I mean, that one's up there because in college you only get four years. In high school too, like you get a limited amount of years. And the pros, you remember the 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 pros that didn't win championships? We can all name them, like the greats that didn't win a championship. Like there's a whole category. Not us. Yeah. <laughs> you got no problems, but there's a whole category for that. So you know, I had I was fortunate to be on some of those powerhouse teams. Um, 2015 was a, a crazy year because Prince was there and he invited us to party with him. Um, Oh, don't just go past that. <laughs> Did it happen? That Did really happened. Yeah, no, yeah. so y'all kicked it with him? Yeah, like How he threw a private concert for That's us. It, I was one of the, like, and I have to always preface this, they went all night. It's really crazy because him and his band, they literally put close. on a concert all night. They made us leave our phones at the door. They allowed us, though, this is how much they think about this stuff. They allowed us to have media there to write articles about it so that we it wasn't just a memory that we could know, but... No photos, no nothing. I was on stage with them. That's there's receipts for that. Like I, I danced. Like we didn't just play a game. Like we was turned up. Um, yeah. Like in that, and it's crazy because as we know, he passed away the very next year. So when we won in 2017, it was different. You know, like they had they had a band that covered music, Prince's music, but it just it, obviously not the same. Yeah, it just right. had this feeling like this. This it was a happy moment, but it had this somber feeling. Like dang, in 2015, we was just with Prince, and you know he's passed away now. So. I would say there's that different emotion. I also got 
uh, traded halfway through the season in 2015. So it was a crazy year for me. Backpedaling a little bit, winning a national championship at UConn, you got a chance to meet President Obama at the time. What was that experience like? It was motivation. You know, like uh, my senior year, we got to meet President Obama. He had just got into office. I remember when it found out that he became president, we were at Coach Ariema's house, like celebrating, turned up that that uh, we had our first black president. And then we were like, oh, snap, we need to go on and win a championship and meet him. So um, <laughs> when we won in 2015, it was the second time he knew Maya because she had won every year since then, basically. So him and Maya were like besties. And it was pretty cool because him and coach as well. It's different when he knows sports, you know, like right. he, he was into it. He knew who we were. So that was a different type of feeling. We played pig with him, by the way. He's like, how much time I got? He's asking his people, like, how much time I got? They was like, you don't have time. What was He's the jumper like? like? Jumper, he's a lefty. You yeah. know, he's it, a lefty. It look, it look, it look all right. Control. Yeah, it's, yeah all right. it's all right. Like, you know that he used to be able to play some pickup and stuff back in the day. He had some, but he was, he didn't, we didn't get to play a whole game. They were telling him, you don't have time. He's like, all right, we'll play pig then. They're like, you don't have time. And he made time That's when dope. we went out there. Um, there's actually some photos of me shooting with him, but yeah, we didn't get to finish the game. We got a little, little lefty jumper. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, 2009, the number four overall pick. Coming from West Virginia, <laughs> going to UConn, now you're the fourth pick in the WNBA. Crazy because... Little old you, huh? Little old me, but what's really crazy is, oh, it was it was wild because everybody was saying I was going anywhere from one to ten because, again, it was that whole... I have to... Every stage of my life, I've had to, like, prove myself again. So when it became pros, I was too small. Like, that was my, my scouting report. They're like, yeah, she's good in college. It's a great system in UConn, but how can I... Yeah, like, you know, so... It went from anywhere I could be one to 10. So I was like thinking about sitting in that room, you know, like, you know, when everybody's numbers getting called and you're just sitting there. I got invited to the draft. Um, my parents were there, Coach Ari Emma was there. And I'm like, I had no idea what was gonna happen. Like, and that's a terrifying feeling. If anybody's ever like, that's a scary feeling where you don't know where you're gonna go. You just wanna hear your name. So one passed, that was Atlanta at one. Angel McCautry went there. Um, number two was Marissa Coleman. Um, and then number three, Christy Tolliver, and then it came me, and I was just like, I was relieved. I'm telling you, I was like, all right, let's get to work because, again, I saw I saw the press clippings. I knew that people didn't think I could be successful at that next level. So that's that's what I remember about the draft. 